Okay, Dr. Goodwin is doing a lesson for us, and we're all going to be part of it. <laughs> I'm super excited. He let, he's going to let me record. <laughs> so here goes. Okay, let's start. We will not wait for uh, you know, people who are coming late because it's already 3 5. Uh, my name is Dr. Gordon. I work as Deputy Medical Superintendent here at Ayurvedagram and I have around 13 years of clinical experience in Ayurveda. Okay, that's my introduction. So, today I just wanted to understand what I know some, some of them have studied Ayurveda a little bit. So, a few of you maybe read in books or uh, maybe in internet or you know, online things. So, I will be giving the basics of Ayurveda, how the body is under, understood in a disease state or a normal state. But if you would like to un understand, if you ask any questions based on that, I can also talk. So, in general, do you have any points where you want to understand? In general, anybody has any questions? I have questions about just Panchakarma and the process. Yeah, yeah. And that will, it will be covered in this. And then, any other? Okay, fine. So I think once we cover the basics along the way, you may get some questions. See, the science of Ayurveda it's, is more than 3,000, 4,000 years old. Maybe more than that. We are not sure about how many years old, but minimum is 2,000, 3,000 years old. Since in those days, there was no parameters to understand the body. There were no you know, scans or investigations, anything to understand the body. Ayurvedic physicians in India, uh, where the origin of Ayurveda is, they understood the body with the symptoms it exhibits. Okay? So they designed uh, certain names like Vata, Pitta and Kapha. Those are the you know, Ayurvedic uh, Sanskrit terminologies. With that they understood the functions of the bo you know, body, how the body functions. And what is the you know, thing? So basically, uh, you all know about five <coughs> elements. Sorry? Five elements: earth, water, yes. fire, you know, air, space. Mm -hmm. Everything in this universe is made up of five elements, including our body. Okay. So among the doshas, also, it's made up of five elements. Vata is made up of air and space. That means it's it's present everywhere. It's omnipresent. It can travel anywhere, including our metaphysical mind. Pitta is fire and water, which is a hot liquid, kind of hot liquid. Kapha is earth and water. Okay, this is a, a basic uh, five elements combination of each doshas. Each do doshas means the functional element of the body. Okay, each has certain function. Vata is responsible for all the movements in the body, the heart pumping, lungs, you know, the urination, defecation, all kinds of movements, our walking, talking, everything is because of air. If we do not have air inside our body, all these functions not possible. Okay? Pitta is responsible for the digestion and metabolism. About how the process of digestion happens, the absorption, the heat maintaining the temperature of the body. Kapha is basically the solid structure. It is made up of earth and water. Among the, all the five elements, earth and water you can see or you can, they have some form like anything in this table, pen, these are all earth form or water. You can see the liquid. So, what you see in a life body, the structure is basically earth and water which is the pure form of Kapha. Okay. <coughs> And apart from these three doshas, there is something called seven datus or the structure of the body. Okay, what you, what you see in a structure of the body is muscles, bones, you know, we have all fat, blood, everything. So in Ayurveda, the structure of the body is in seven stages. The first stage is the essence of the food. When we eat food, the first absorption happens, that is the rasa. Second is the blood and fluids. Third stage is the muscles. Uh, Fourth is the medas or the fat. Fifth is the asti or the bones. Seventh, inside the bone is bone marrow. And uh, sixth, sorry, sixth, seventh is shubra, seminal or seminal fluids, <coughs> which is the last datu or the deepermost essence, you know, 
uh, tissues of our body. That's how the seven stages of the dhatus. You will get some more clarity on this later when I explain about the body. Okay? So, <coughs> normally if you see how the structure means the physical structure. Okay? What is the fuel for this physical structure? How the physical structure is getting nourished or nourishment? With what? Breath. Hmm? Breath. Food. Yeah, food. Basically food. If you do not have food, if you have even air, that's not going to help much. So basically food. So in our science, we give more importance to the kind of food what we have to eat. Even when we are healthy and also when we are having any kinds of disease or you know, condition where we need to be careful. So, <clears throat> is it okay? So, and go to the next. Yeah. So, basically, God created human body like this way. Okay? The top part of the body is kapha, which has all the important organs like brain, eyes, you know, all the important things, which is the solid, is kapha. The middle part of the body is basically pitta, where the digestive system process happens, the agni, digestive fire, you know, there is something called fire in the, in the stomach. That's the Agni. That maintains our body temperature. The difference between a live body and a dead body without any structural damage is what? Heat. The heat. A person who died, the dead body does not have the heat. It's cold. Even though the structure is intact. So the basic difference is what? When you lose your Agni, you're gone. You're gone. You're dead. Yeah, dead. So basically, the Agni is giving the body's temperature. But at the same time, the Agni should not increase beyond the control of 98.6 Fahrenheit, which is the normal body temperature. If it goes beyond the normal temperature, then the degeneration starts. The body gets into damage. Okay? And below is the Vata or the air element. Below the umbilicus is the air element. See how God beautifully designed his body, like from below, <coughs> the vata blows the fire. Can anyone lit a fire without oxygen? Hmm. No. No? So same thing here, from below, the vata blows the fire, which is the digestive, you know, fire. And from the top, the kapha, the solid structure of the kapha is controlling this fire in a cage so that it will not damage or destroy the other parts of the body. But it is confined in one place. Only the reflection of the heat will be there in the body. But actually, the major heat is in the stomach. The acid secretion in our stomach, the pH value is very high. It's 2. 2 to 0.5 like that. So if you take that acid in the hand, it will create a hole. That much powerful acids are there in the stomach which actually protected by the mucus inside the you know stomach coating. So you understand from the below, Vata is blowing the fire. From the top, Kapha is actually keeping the fire intact so that the di digestion system process happens. When the digestion happens, absorption happens, absorption happens, structure gets nourishment. Okay, that's the thing. The same, this is called dual mechanism or dual principle. Throughout the world, this is how everything functions or to maintain any solid structure. Okay? <coughs> we all know there are so many planets, you know, around in the in this globe. What do you call it? globe or universe? universe? Universe. Okay? So we are here in Earth. There is a sun. Sun is bigger than Earth, so I'm making it big. There's a moon. Okay? So far. We have not found out any living creatures in any other planet. And according to Ayurveda, or my personal opinion, you cannot find any, any living creature in any, any part of the universe. Because only Earth has the two characters or the two you know, extreme characters. Sun indicates heat or cold? Heat. Moon? So, to, to keep a solid structure intact, you need two principles, which is the heat and the cold, in an equal quantity or maybe in a kind of balanced quality, in a quantity, so that the structure is maintained properly. If you have only fire, only sun, 24 hours, what will happen? Can we survive on this earth? No, it will melt. It will melt? <laughs> yeah. If you have only cold, no heat, can we survive? I'll freeze. Everything will 
will get closed, right? So God beautifully created in a way where both these are essential to maintain this structure. But due to global warming and all, so many things are happening around all these natural disasters and all. But still, Earth is the only place where people, any living creatures can live because of this dual mechanism. The same thing in our body. Okay, there is a heat which is which should be maintained. There is a coldness of the kapha on the top, and there is the air from the below where this acne or the fire is maintained in the middle of the abdomen so that the structure is getting proper nourishment and it is without any damage. See, the ultimate aim of any medical science is what? To take care of the structure, right? If I have a disease, that means some structural damage I will get or maybe, if, so for example, if I have cancer, if I have arthritis, if I have diabetes or blood pressure, so what is the one which we fear? Our body can get damaged, correct? There are functional imbalances also and there are structural degeneration also. So the modern science or the allopathy which is the last 300 years, that comes only in the place where the structure gets damaged, correct? Before that if you go to any allopathic physician, they do all the tests, if the test says normal, do the MRI, everything is normal, they will say come back when you get damaged, <laughs> correct? <laughs> the science is designed in such a way that only they can treat or understand only the structural damage. Of course they have physiology also, we also study physiology but then that's only in the functional level, when it's in the disease level they will not understand. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> this is clear. Okay, I'll go to the next. Now, when we eat food, okay, the food goes to the stomach and then when the digestion happens, it goes all over the body, correct? The nourishment goes to all over the body through a minute channel called shrotas. In Sanskrit, it's called shrotas or in other ways, it's microscopic channels. Microscopic channels. <clears throat> Meaning, you cannot see that, but you have to imagine and understand. Okay? How we understand? Is there a compartments in body or the body is a single unit? Hmm? Compartments. Pardon me? There's compartments in the body. Compartments in the body? Do you think so? No, single unit. Single unit? <laughs> Of course, body is a single unit because there is no boundaries in, in between. We have different systems, but the cell is interconnected, right? Yes. Cells are interconnected. There is no divisions in the body. Okay, that means what? When you treat a person, you, you should treat as a whole body as a single unit. Okay, that's how uh, the proper approach happens. But unfortunately, the latest developments, we have different, different specialists. There is pulmonologist, there is gynecologist, there is cardiologist, there is neurologist, you know, so many ologists are there, but then there is no connection between whether one disease can affect the other organ. They may understand, but then if you go with two problems, I will tell you a simple example. Okay, before that I, I want to I, I give you a clarity on these doshas, okay. Can, this vata is actually basically dry, you know, if you, if you pour water here and on the fan, it gets dried up after some time. So air has ability to dry basically. So vata is dry and light. Air is light, right? Can't weigh air. Pitta is basically hot liquid. It's, it's hot, at the same time it's liquid. Kapha is basically, it's cold but it is, it is, it is heavy also, little. Cold and heavy. The properties are like this. <coughs> vata is dry plus cold. Pitta is hot liquid. Kapha is cold plus liquid. It's moisture. Okay? Cold and it's moisture also. Now, the body basically is also cold and moisture. Inside we have a lot of sticky sticky mucus. If you see any surgery, open a you know, live person's body anywhere, you will see shiny things. But at the same time, if, if somebody died, you do this section and all, you know, when we study, it's dry completely. 
because there is no moisture, there is no life in that. So that is basically because of these two qualities. To understand the body is pure kapha with the combination of pitta and vata. <coughs> to understand that, this simple you know, example, if you take every day one kilo of sweet, one kg of sweets, <coughs> what will happen for one month? Hmm? We'll put on weight. <laughs> Come to <Ayurveda. laughs> uh, Of course, eating sweets and diabetes, no connection. Diabetes is actually insulin insufficiency. No connection with sweets. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but if you do not do exercise and be overweight, there is a possibility. But clinically, there is no connection with eating sweets and getting sugar. Uh, <clears throat> so, that means what? If you take sweets every day, sweet is cold or hot? Cold by nature and moisture. It will be moist and cold. Your body will become moist and cold. Yes. So same quality increases. If you take sweets, you will get put on weight. That means same quality increases. Opposite quality decreases. Opposite quality of heat is... Uh, cold is what? Heat. So if you take food which are heat property, you will lose strength. Okay? Ayurveda... <coughs> so far clear? Yes. If you have any questions, uh, I have to make this. We come back on this, what you just said. You know? The what you just said, I was cold confused too. Cold that you mentioned just now. Huh. Can you say that again? Cold, cold and heat property. Uh, so basically, our body is cold by nature. Cold by nature meaning we have temperature, 98.6 Fahrenheit, but actually it is cold. We cannot tolerate heat. If I have fever, for example, if I have dengue or a swine flu or a malaria, anything, any infection. The major problem people die because of any infection quickly is because of the heat. The body cannot tolerate more than certain heat, sub 101 degrees, 102 degrees temperature for 3 days, 4 days, body will collapse. It's not because of cancer or HIV will die in one day, but a dengue or a H1N1 flu or a bird flu will kill you in one or two days because of the heat property. Okay. <clears throat> but you were saying if you take in, so if you take in like sweets, you're, you'll become colder, but if you take in hot, mm. then... You lose, you'll, you'll lose strength. You'll lose strength? Why is that? That's, I because think that's what heat, we have. Because heat property. That. Heat. Because Body cannot tolerate heat. Oh, okay. So if you, if you uh, get to too make hot, it, you'll lose strength. Yes, yes. To make okay. it more clear, we have six tastes, okay, in Ayurveda. First is we have sweet. Taste, okay? Next, bitter. And then we have astringent. These three good increases the strength. Increases the strength of the body. Because it has similar quality in the body. Next we have uh, pungent which is hot or spicy, salt, sour, these three reduces the strength of the body. If you are taking food which is more of spicy, sour and salty, you will have lower strength than the person who is taking more of this kind of this is this so because why these three creates heat in the body. These three increases cold in the body or the temperature basically. So basically the disease or strength of the human body is only four four kind of you know qualities. I'll tell you once this is clear, next phase I'll tell that. This is clear? Yeah. yeah. Yes. There's a question about sweet. So that's No, there is a limit for everything, right? See, I said, example, sweet is good for the body. Doesn't mean that every day you have to eat sweets. <laughs> so you have to maintain that balance. For example, the weight and all depends on your height. Clinically, if you are okay, then it's fine. So it's all about balance. Yes, it's all about balance. Correct. I'll wrap it, clean it. Okay. Um, why, why does he 
bring the strength down in the body. Uh, That's just how it works. Uh, uh, yes, it's uh, it's because the body cannot tolerate too much heat. Like we need to maintain the normal moisture in the body. Uh, how to say? Um, mm, well, it's like what he just eighty percent of the body is water. You know, right? Body has a lot of fluids inside. So we need to have some. I'll tell you the, in, in this uh, thing. <coughs> Heat, uh, then dry. Opposite to heat is cold, right? Opposite to dry is moisture. This is health, this is disease. That's all, simple. If you are having good moisture and cold property in the body, you are healthy. If you are having dryness and heat in the body, you have problem disease because what happens the channels no the channels which transports the nourishment called srotas they will get get you know what you call loosened in the heat they will not have the strength to transport the nourishment properly just to understand take a chili chili no green chili green chili cut it into two pieces and rub it on your skin you will feel good no, I think that's a simple example to understand how the spicy food can irritate our system inside. Yes. So then, with this model, um, people who live in the drier weather are they naturally uh, more prone to disease versus people who live in the colder weather? Uh, definitely, there is a there is a possibility, but then there is something in Ayurveda called accustomed or satmya in Sanskrit. Satmya or accustomed means from childhood, if you are used to certain weather or certain food habits, your body will 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 have not will not have much problem because you are used to it from childhood. Mm -hmm. That's why we see we have different weathers in the world, right? So many different different weathers, different uh, you know um, uh, food habits around the world, but still people have things. But basically, this is the concept. Wherever in the world, if you eat spicy food, you are going to have problems. You will live lesser than the people who are not eating spicy food. Because of the heat property. And you're going to go over like what things we can do that are mm, invoking moisture and cold and health. Yes. Right? yes. Versus things that invoke... Correct. Okay. Correct. The best, the <clears throat> best food to take care of the body's strength and also not having the heat property and cold property, first is ghee. That's why we use a lot of ghee in Ayurveda. So many medications as ghee. You know, every chapter, we have only 22 diseases in Ayurveda. In the, in the entire system, we have only 22 diseases. Not more than 20 new diseases. That's the stage actually, every stage. Any new disease in the world, we can accommodate in that 22 diseases. Okay? In every disease management, one ghee preparation is mentioned. Once you cure the disease, you have to give a ghee and then finish the treatment. Why? Because you have to maintain this moisture and cold property in the channels in the body. Otherwise, the treatment is incomplete. Most of the time, we will be giving it a ghee form or a, maybe in a kashayam form, which is, you know, uh, going to take care of the things. Second is milk. Milk also is cold and, you know, stinga. Why ghee? Because it supports the agni also. You see this in India, they do huma with the fire, correct? If you add ghee, little, little, the fire will blow more. Same thing with snehavana or, you know, any treatment we do. Little, little ghee if you give, the agni is going to increase, or the strength of the body is going to increase. Yeah, you have a question. Uh, you mentioned about spicy food. So mm. spicy food means only chili or what else is comes under spicy food? Mainly chili, green chili and red chili. Because pepper, ginger and all is not that spicy than chilies actually. Turmeric is? Turmeric is no problem. Turmeric, uh, garlic, uh, ginger and all is okay. Yeah, yeah, chili is the main, main risk. See, it's easy to understand. Any fever, if it's not controlled, will kill you easily. Correct? If anybody has an HIV or a cancer, they're not going to die in two days. But a fever will. That is the seriousness of the heat property. So you okay. said milk is like good for everything too, but what about people who have milk allergies? In America, you hear all the time about 
That's weakness of the intestines, not milk allergy. It's what? Weakness of the intestines. A Anybody who is having a lactose intolerance or a gluten allergy, it's because their intestines are weak. I have helped so many people who had lactose intolerance when they come for treatment and made them to again drink milk normally. Because we need to increase their strength of the digestive system or agni. See, it's easy to say you have lactose intolerance and don't take milk. But if you do not take milk, what are the consequences? Your bones will be weak, you will not have good kapha in the body, you will lose. So, that is how the core concept is very different, generally. Correct? Yeah. Warm. Always. It will not digest easily. Again, this Agni factor. Ayurveda does not agree anything raw. Because anything you put pressure on the Agni, we should always make the digestive fire the work easy. I have treated a lady who had, I think I shared with somebody, who was on raw diet for 5 years from America. She was on which place? Uh, Houston, Texas. So she was on raw diet for 5 years. On what? Raw. 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 Just only raw. Uncooked. Uncooked. Uncooked food. Uh, there is a theory, you know, somebody said that uh, it's good for you. We are not supposed to eat anything cooked because all vitamins are getting damaged, whatever, you know, thing. So she came with a serious stomach issues and health problems. She took three cycles of Ayurveda sittings to recover her completely. Three cycles of 28 days. Now she's able to walk. Before, from here to, to walk there, she feels you know, so exhausted. They diagnosed it as chronic fatigue syndrome. Anything syndrome means complex, you know. Can you continue? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Yes, I was talking about the bodies, you know, how to understand the body's compartments like Shrotas. Shrotas means we are eating food and then it's going to each and every, you know, part of the body. Each and every cell is interconnected, correct? There's no division. Okay. So, I was a few years back, I was treating a lady who came with uh, two symptoms, typically. Uh, first is excessive congestion or phlegm, you know what you call that, respiratory symptom. Too much congestion and phlegm for four years. Same uh, time she was having white discharge also, four years. Okay? In the general scenario, both are different, uh, you know, both will be treated by different doctors in the general, you know, conventional system. Pulmonologists will treat the lungs and the gynecologist will treat the white discharge okay and both they tried uh, treating her four years she took <coughs> antibiotics lot of things it was not coming down then she came to me this both white discharge and uh, the congestion or phlegm is excess kapha kapha is what moisture okay vitiated kapha i just gave medication for two weeks to reduce the excess kapha her white discharge stopped after one week and congestion reduced after one week. She said in four years time, first time I am without white discharge. Okay, that is the connection between the body. Body is intercon interconnected, there is no departments. So that is simple to understand. <clears throat> so this, the main aim of Ayurveda is to create a balance of this. The main thing is <coughs> Vata, the strength of Vata, Helping the Agni, the digestive fire, okay? When Agni is good, digestion happens properly. If digestion happens, there will be uh, absorption and transportation of nutrition. When that goes to the Srotas, the structure will be maintained. The structure of the body will be maintained. This is the basic physiology of what we try to achieve in every disease. We need to always take care of the strength of the imbalance, you know, the imbalance of Vata, the strength. <clears throat> because if Vata is not in good shape, your Agni will be weak or disturbed. If Agni is not good, digestion will not be good. Digestion is not good, you will not get absorption and the structure will not get the nourishment. <clears throat> in any disease, this alignment we try to bring. That's why uh, there is something called Vasti or Kashaya Vasti or you know Ayurvedic enema most of the people will undergo here because we need to bring that balance of this Vata 
once vata is in good shape the digestion will be good everything will fall in line actually we are, truly speaking for any disease we are treating vata what do you mean by good shape pardon me can you say that vata is in good shape what do you mean it should be it should not be very high or it should not be low also it should be in its own strength there is a variable Pardon me. Is there yes, yes. But we need to we need to have the strength. The percentage of vata varies each person because our prakriti, you know, I haven't come to the prakriti yet. So uh, each person, the strength of the vata differs. But everybody has to have a good balance of this. If there is a disturbance in vata, definitely it's going to affect your agni. Because same, agni is in the middle, vata is in the below. Suppose vata is on the top, kapha is on the below, there will not be any life. Okay. Uh, I think basics are almost covered in this. Any other questions? So if you have excess vata, It disturbs the fire. Yes, exactly. Or it can make the fire like too big, maybe. Yes, it can. <clears throat> See, water has a specific role in the body, and it travels in one direction always, which is downwards. 